God bless you. I'll be doing tonight's teaching. Before we start, we'll go ahead and hear from our Heavenly Father, according to 1 Corinthians 14. So if somebody would like to... Uh, Malai, would you open with a word of prayer? Uh, yeah. Yahweh, thank you for this night and for everyone to be just touched by the teaching and for um, everyone who's not here and everyone who's going to be watching. Thank you for them and their lives. In the name of Hushak, the Christ, amen. If you'd like to speak in tongues and interpret or prophesy, please do. Know that I hear your prayers, I hear your petitions, I hear your supplications, my children. I am here listening as I'm holding you in my arms too. I have a hedge of protection around all of you protecting you from the fiery darts of the wicked one as you walk forth in this battle. Never forget it's a war. Never let your never let your armor lay on the floor. Put it on. Keep it on all the time. My sons and daughters, know that I am able to I am able to create for for when you're missing the the pieces of the puzzles that you're looking for in your life that I am able to create and move these things in and around you so be walking in faith knowing that I am a, a, a great uh, carpenter uh, but being able to create and craft whatever is needed and uh, miraculous things that, that are beyond your comprehension and so come before me and lay yourself out and, and humble yourself down before me that I am able to work wonderful mighty things for you I'll speak in tongues and interpret. Nequatresha Mukule, the Vanari Teke, Turush Padram, Ye Teke, Trikemo Tunduani Reke, Fudra Tajisin Trit, the Tudre Fandri Kevus Shishakandri Nuata. Know that if you humble me, then I can bless you. If you humble yourself, I can lift you up. If you humble yourself, then you actually engage in talking with me. Many times you are waiting for answers but you're in a standing position. And that is not how you come before me, and that is not how you hear from me. It's when you are face down, like Moses was when he first saw the burning bush, that you actually engage in a conversation. It is when you humble yourself, is when you actually pick up the phone to speak to me. <coughs> Fran's response to it was really neat, because he said, uh, here's people that really don't know how to walk out in power, trying to help, trying to help. But one of them said, he, one of them says, Yahweh doesn't even need an egg. Choose to believe. I'm like, now that was worth reading. Yahweh doesn't need a what? Egg. Oh. Don't need it. It doesn't need an egg, right? Okay, so we're going, okay, so we're really raising our standards. We're going, okay, what does he need? Faith. Faith. He needs obedience. <clears throat> Yahweh's already done the work through Christ Jesus. His hands down here. And how do we reach back up? It's through faith and it's through humility. How many times I've not been taught because I've been humble. I didn't speak in tongues until I was 16 years old. I was finally humble. And actually, mom came to me and asked me if I wanted to. I'm like, yeah. Why, why didn't I do that when I was six or seven? I was, I was waiting parents for... parents dropped the ball. No, That's no, but I could have wanted it. I, I remember seeing other people speak in tongues and I desired it, but I didn't humble myself. I wonder how many things were missing out because of uh, lack of humility. The teaching tonight, what I want to <clears throat> bring in a couple different perspectives stewardship um, the coming earth where we're going and and some different perspectives on what we're going to be doing on the coming earth that some things I never even considered so let's try to bring all these things in together about what is stewardship what is expected what's the purpose of stewardship in this life and then what's going to be expected in life to come and when is Jesus Christ coming back we don't know yeah so when I was a teenager, I said, as soon as I'm 25, I'm done having all my fun. Then I'll start. Actually, I probably said 21 because 25 was way too old. And then when I got to be 21, yeah, when I'm about 25, well, then I'll start. I want to have all my fun first. And I was speculating that Christ wasn't coming back. We don't know when he's coming back. And wouldn't it be great when he's coming back? So don't put these things off. 
But what is the purpose? And this is what we should be doing with everybody's life. And so I don't have the title. Hopefully, Dad can help me with the title on this. What's the purpose of your life? What is the purpose of your existence, my existence? And the neat thing about uh, believers, anyways, is I can tell you how he communicates to me, and I can tell you how I know emphatically he was communicating to me. Right? And, and you can't convince me otherwise. He knows how to communicate to us, too, if we humble ourselves. He'll communicate something, and you know it's him. Isn't that neat? You don't need a translator. Somebody can give you a prophecy, or you can be at a teaching, and all of a sudden you hear two or three, three, two or three things, and you go, that's from me. How'd you know that? Because he's a perfect communicator if we humble ourselves. If we open up our heart to go, okay, uh, let me have it. Well, what do you got? You know, and, and this could be the last fellowship we ever sit before Christ comes back. This could be the last time we get to invest in our 401k for our permanent retirement. Yeah. Okay? All right. Okay. All right. What is it? Uh, but instead of retirement being after 59 and a half or 60, retirement could be tomorrow. Yeah. Right? And who's going to be in charge? We don't know. But let's start off with Luke chapter 16, verse 10. Actually, chapter 16, verse 1. I'm trying to keep an eye on my time since I like to talk. Just because I have something to say doesn't mean I should be saying stuff. I'm trying to learn. Slow to speak. What chapter? 16? 16. It's page 78. <clears throat> And I, somebody would volunteer to read 1 through 10. I will. Thank you. And he went on to say unto his disciples also, There was a certain rich man who had a steward, and the same was accusing him <coughs> as squandering his goods. And accosting him, he said unto him, What's this I hear of thee? Render the account of thy stewardship, for thou canst no longer be steward. And the steward said within himself, What shall I do? Because my Lord taketh away the stewardship from me. <clears throat> Dig I cannot. To beg I'm ashamed. I know what I'll do. That when I am removed out of the stewardship, they may welcome me into their own houses. And calling unto him each one of the debtors of his own Lord, he was saying unto the first, How much owest thou, my Lord? And he said, A hundred baths of oil. And he said unto him, Kindly take thine accounts, and sitting down, make haste and write fifty. And after that another one he said, And how much owest thou? And he said, A hundred homers of wheat. And he said unto him, Kindly take thine accounts, and write eighty. And the Lord praised the unrighteous steward, in that with forethought he acted. Because the sons of this age have more forethought than the sons of light, respecting their own generation. And I unto you say, for yourselves, make ye friends with the unjust riches, in order that, as soon as it shall <coughs> fall, they may welcome you into the age-abiding tents. The faithful in least, in much also is faithful. And he that in least is unrighteous, in much also is unrighteous. Faithful in least, in much also is faithful. So worthy with little, or worthy with much. And that was, and I didn't understand this parable to, to tell today. I knew the scripture. I remember Kenneth Copeland or Creflo Dollar or somebody doing a teaching saying some of the believers that are listening to his prosperity message that they were delivering. He says, you are believing for a mansion, but you're not taking care of your apartment. He's not a fool. You destroy your uh, mansion the same way. And so that, and so I, I was familiar with that, with, with that scripture. If you're not taking care of your bike, you can't have a car. Um, if you're not taking care of your wife, how are you going to take care of your kid? We can turn that. <clears throat> but in, um, and I had that once, one time these words came out of my mouth. Because here's my son. He come, he, I get to see him four days a month. So he didn't get to play with his toys because we're very blessed that when he's in town, he plays with his family, which is great. So we had all these toys unboxed from Christmas and these other things. And he came in. And I'm looking at some of the stuff that went in, went in his room, and he didn't want to play with anything, and, uh, and he wanted to play with one thing. Then he started talking about something he didn't have. And I looked at him, and, and man, it's great to be a, a parent. I mean, it really is. Because I look at him, and I said, until you are thankful for what you have, you cannot have any more. It came out of my mouth. How, does that apply to parents? Mm -hmm. Until you are thankful for what you have, you can't have any more. And, he, and he, he was like, yeah, whatever. But I was like, that night, I went, I got to start working on being thankful. 
and, and things. Not that necessarily that I want more things, but how unthankful am I? Oh, I already had this oil going off. But the, what's the purpose of this parable? What is the purpose of this? I didn't notice until today. What's the purpose of the prudent steward? So you can see right next to it is rich man Lazarus. People take that out of context all the time. You say, what's the purpose of the rich man Lazarus? If they didn't believe Moses and the prophets, then they won't believe a man resurrected. That's the purpose of the rich man Lazarus. It's the conclusion. What is the purpose of the prudent steward? Okay, this is interesting because I just wanted to quote the scripture and then I believe I was, was communicator. Figure this out. At the very beginning, uh, it, uh, it says in verse, let me see here. In verse 1, it says that he, a certain rich man had steward, and the same was accused him of squandering his goods. And he said, uh, basically, he says, you, you can no longer be a steward. He's getting fired from a job. He's losing his job. So what does this guy do? In verse 3, the steward said within himself, what am I going to do? He says, uh, in verse 4, it goes down. In verse 4, he said, I, I have it highlighted in another Bible. Um, I know that what I'll do that when I am removed out of the stewardship, they may welcome me with their houses. So what he decides to do is he says, if I lost my job, you know what I have to do? What do I have left? He had relationships. People that owed him money. He decided to make friends. That's what he had left, stewardship. So what does this guy go do? Is he called the one guy that owed him 100 baths of oil? So I wasn't ever quite sure about this. I had to really go this over and over again. He goes... Uh, pay me 50. Why would you do that? He's making friends. He wants to be able to go to people's houses. It says that up here in verse... Um, verse 4. I'll go back to that. I'm sorry, I have a highlighted Mother Bible. I should have stuck with it. I know what I will do, that when I am removed out of the stewardship, they may what? Welcome, Welcome me in their houses. He's making friends. The purpose of this... That's part of it. And so then he goes to somebody else, uh, to the uh, homers of wheat in verse 7. After that and to another, he said, how much do you owe me? And the guy said, I, I, I owe you 100 homers of wheat. He said unto him, uh, kindly take thine accounts and write 80. He's, he's giving away, uh, writing off debts. Why? Because he wants to make friends. And Jesus Christ goes, does that make sense to you? Because what does this guy have left? I don't have a job or anything. I'm going to do some... I'm going to go make friends because I might need their help later on. Does that make sense? You're losing your house. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus Christ goes, does that make sense that this guy has what's called forethought? And Christ goes, this guy had forethought, didn't he? Mm -hmm. he and he points out that the, the, the men of this age, verse 8, and the Lord prays the unrighteous steward. It, it, the unrighteous steward in that with forethought he acted. The parable, he, with forethought he acted. He was thinking ahead. Jesus Christ, with this parable goes, he praised him because he thought ahead. And then he goes on, because the sons of this age have more forethought than the sons of light respecting their own generation. The purpose of it is saying they're planning ahead. What is going to be your job in the new earth, Wendy? Working for Yahushua. What yeah. type of job? I don't know. Forethought. So this, the, 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 I don't necessarily know either. But one of the purposes of this, this thought, the, the teaching that I want to share with, is tell me exactly what you're going to be doing. Get focused. I'm going to be waiting tables. Okay? Um, Exodus 20. Can you eat? Oh, no. No, that, that's a given. The pain, death, death pains no more. What's going to be your job? And, and, and uh, no, we don't have to go to Exodus 20. You, we, you can go there. Can anybody quote the Ten Commandments? Oh, you're going to read them? I didn't know if anybody could quote them. Uh, yeah, memorized. Uh, Hear, Israel. Hear No, I, you know, Exodus 20. And the divine Yahweh thy God, thou shalt not have other gods besides me. One. You know the rest. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not make any images. Thou two. Thou shalt not. Thou utter. Utter, utter falsehood. Yeah, utter thy, Yahweh's thy God's name for falsehood. falsehood. Remember the, Remember the Sabbath. Sabbath day and honor thy father and thy mother. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not murder. murder first. Oh, murder. 
Adultery, steal, covet the neighbor's goods. Uh, bear false witness. Bear false witness, covet thy neighbor's goods. Oh. Uh, and I, we don't. I, the fourth command was honor thy mother and thy father. So we had it a little bit backwards. I, I do have that one memorized in order. Um, I'm pretty sure I know. No, it's the fifth. Is it the fifth? Okay, but remember the Sabbath. How many days is a man supposed to work? Because if you read the rest of that, because that, that's a paraphrase. Six. Six. How many days are we going to work in the new earth? You ever think about that? Take a guess. Time will be different. Take a guess. All the time. Six days. Six. Oh. <laughs> well, we won't have a sun or a moon or. Forethought. Forethought. This life is an audition for the coming life. What's the purpose of your life? It is what kind of life do you want there? Yeah. And it is to teach us what we're going to be doing there. What is? Uh, will there be any images of Yahweh there? No. Will we be using Yahweh's name for falsehood? No. So we're in we're in a gap between the Garden of Eden and the Garden of Eden, which is, a, is the new earth. And so how many days are we going to work? Well, today we don't necessarily work for six, but if you can make enough income in five days, that's fine. But we are going to be doing what in the new earth? What are you going to be doing? I don't know. I don't know either. But this is for you to be thinking. Um, what, what, what will you be doing and, and the work and I'm going to say this is where we should be helping people with fourth thought what is your, going to be your job uh, sales teaching building uh, but, uh, but you can use your imagination but, but, but let's really use, bring it back to practical I, I heard somebody says that their kids you can be anything you want is that true no, mm -hmm. no. then why do we say it no, you, you can do anything you set your mind to. Really? Because I can set my mind to a neurosurgery and I'll never be Ben Carson unless Yahweh intervenes. What are you going to be doing in the new earth? What are you doing now? This is your audition. If I think that I'm going to be a singer, a musician for Yahweh, because this is how people teach, it's like there's no, there's no grounds for their thoughts. Aaron, you're going to be a singer for Yahweh? Yes, I will. I'm going to be, I'm going to be on stage. I'll be pulling jam. Really? What, what have you, so what have you done for him here? I sing in a closet. I sing at fellowship, but I really even practice. Oh, but somehow you're going to be doing that there? We should be really looking at what, good steward, worthy with little, worthy with much. What are you working on today? What are your desires and your passion? And, and then, and then, uh, and then what, uh, and in my life, I definitely, it could be a shock, but I don't think that I would be a singer. I was ministering to somebody who said he wants help, he wants to be, uh, he wants to be mentored, he wants to be mentored, uh, but he stopped asking me for help because I'd ask him how many chapters he read that week and it started bothering him. And I came to this guy, he's a really good musician, and I said, if somebody came to you, I said, I said let me just say, I mean, before he, I knew he was coming for help again. I said, if you ever had somebody come to you and say they really want to play the guitar, they really want to excel at it. He says there, but they never practice on the fretboard. They never learn how to read music. They don't spend any time in it, maybe 15 minutes a week. He goes, was that frustrating for you when they come back and they ask you for help again? He started laughing. I go, that person, and so in our lives, where are you investing your time? And then that, that's going to give you an idea because you are determining what you're going to be doing in the coming earth right now. You know that, right? And if you do nothing, you'll, I don't know what you'll be doing in the new earth. It'll be better than anything down here. But we will get to see our brethren who excel and they excel and they excel. Look, I could have been somebody like that. I'm glad I'm here. Don't get me wrong. But I knew that guy back when he was back down here. And that's the idea. What are you doing with your time? Jesus Christ endured the death of the cross for the glory and the joy that was set before him. Um, but Jesus Christ, the purpose of this is forethought. Fourth, this guy was thinking about the relationships and what. Uh, let me see here. So we look at um, stewardship, and so I'm going to pick on myself a little bit. Um, uh, what do you have left in your life? Because all of us have been fired. I love that with the, the talents. What you gave one, three talents, one five, and one one. And Jesus Christ in the parable, the guy with one talent gets fired. You're fired! I'm <laughs> like Donald Trump over the apprentice. I've been fired. 
I've, I've lost them, and all of us have. Where Christ goes, I gave you a job, you didn't do it. We, I, you've probably done it in business. I've done it in business. I just blew it. Get fired. Okay. But in this, in, in this thing with, with the steward, uh, the prudent steward, what did he have left? He started really working on what he had left. And um, what do you have left? Is it money? How about children? Friends? Talents? And like with the talents, I thought about music. I really enjoy playing the music, but I'm not... I'm not I'm, I'm not devoting any time into it to helping anybody with it either. Um, uh, and then uh, one of the things that I'm, I guess where I'm, where I'm meant to go is with stewardship. What are you in steward of? Uh, whether it's relationships, money, family, clothing, house, businesses. And one of the things that I, that I have a lot of and that I'm really good at, and this might be a shock to you, is making friends. Because I really like people. I have a lot of friends. Um, and as I thought about that, something that I'm kind of gifted at, hey, how you doing? I know everybody wherever we're going to walk and stuff like that, is as I was thinking, how, what kind of stewardship? Obviously, I love people. I love being around people. I'm from the, the, the country fun. You know, mom's from peace. I'm from fun. As long as it's fun, I'm in, right? Aaron, do you want to have a lot of friends in paradise or in the new earth? Oh, uh, yeah, you, well, why would you even ask that? What kind of steward are you being to the friends you have here? I was thinking about Thomas Sowell with, with, with friendships. He says, he said, if you love somebody, you tell them the truth. If you want something from somebody, you tell them what they want to hear. And one of my jobs is a salesman. And I know how to keep my mouth shut and how to tell people what they want to hear. But I, am I deceiving myself to think I'm going to have a whole bunch of friends in the new earth when I'm telling people what they want to hear instead of telling them, look, uh, if you vote for the Democratic Party, you're breaking, you're breaking all these commandments. You're breaking 1 Corinthians 5. And so in, in my case, with friendship, uh, that I'm able to look at it and say, are you being a good steward with your friendships? Something else I thought about um, is with children and spouses. Are we, being good, are we being a good steward with it? On this earth, mom and dad with Melania, or Shauna with Elijah and Isaiah and Esther and Ruth, can look and say, what, are, what stewardship do we have? You, you've been given a relationship. And you can, and you can say, with this relationship, Caven and I also, you say, uh, I can give the kid what they want. And I can focus on the relationship in this life. But is that investing in the relationship with my kid in the next life? No. no. Be the same with the spouse. If, if my spouse is not doing the right thing, I know they're going the wrong direction. I'm not reproving them because I want peace. Am I investing in this life with that spouse, that relationship here? Or am I, am I investing it in the relationship with that spouse in the new earth? And then we look at stewardship going, golly, how many times have I been guilty if I'm just settling right here because I'm not thinking about the relationship there. And I, I think the same thing with the, what it says that we're not even going to be married when, when, in the new earth, right? Mm -hmm. I used to, I, the first time I thought of it, I was like, man, mom and dad are getting a divorce? That stinks. That's it. And then I, you know, I started thinking about it. It was my first thought. No, Aaron, the relationship with your mom and dad will be better than it ever was in any kind of marriage. It's going to be better. Oh. Well, that's even better. So when I invest in the relationships, which usually relationships is the big one with us, but if I invest in the relationship with my family members in this earth here, I can go, man, I can really have a good relationship with people on this earth here, but the believers anyways, but I could be a salesman and tell them what they want to hear and become very popular here, or I could tell them what Yahweh wants them to hear and be investing in that same relationship when Christ comes back. That's not easy, is it? But Jesus Christ says in Mark 3.35, Who is my brother, who is my sister, and who is my mother? Christ was investing in the relationship after the resurrection. Do you think that hurt his feelings to say that to his mom? He's perfect. Here's his brothers, James, Judas, his, possibly his sisters. Do you think that hurt them? Yeah, that hurt them. He had to sit here and I can tell them what they want to hear. But I guarantee you, you know what's going to happen? When we, when we invest in those relationships, when Christ comes back, we're going to be so thankful. I'm so thankful I re your, your dad reproved me when I was being a dummy. Because what's going to happen? Well, we don't know exactly what's going to happen, but this is forethought, thinking about the age to come. 
and investing into it. And that way your heart is, that's where your treasure is going to be. Because why would I reprove Christians, believers that I'm so close to? Because I, Especially for me. I'm from fun. I want to be around people all the time. So reprove people does not necessarily come easy. Or if you're from peace. Some of you guys here from peace country, that's not easy too. And if you're thinking about just this relationship here, then you're going to miss it. And that's fine. But this is where we should build each other up and go, man, what kind of relationship do you want to have with your, your, your dad or your mom or your sister when Christ comes back? And Christ is going to say, I saw what you did with the relationship there. You were very good with your relationship. Come on in. Yeah, baby. It'll be the same thing with parents. And even parents will deal with their teenagers and their kids going, man, when they make 20, when they turn 25, or when they have kids, they'll come thanking me. I'm sure Holly has come to you a couple of different times. And you're like, ha, 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 ha. And that's on the short run, but that's nothing compared to when Christ comes back. How can we reprove a parent or a kid or whoever if we're not having the forethought? Um, and I'm guilty of this. I never, I've never thought of this until today. Um, and so we're looking at how many friends do I want on the new earth? Okay. You guys, if, I really like people. I really like friends. And I have a real conflict with Facebook. Do you know why? I want friends. I want pats on the back. I love people getting together and everybody having a good time. And I look at people on Facebook who got four, what did I write down here? 400 likes, 20,000 followers. Why will I never have 400 likes and 20,000 followers? She speaks the truth. Well, to my advantage, I have you guys that can look at my Facebook and say, Aaron, you're posting stuff because you want, to, you want people to like you. That's basically, you're telling people what they want to hear so you can use them. You're not setting the captives free. So we can look at some of these, we can look at these other relationships and go, hmm, Jesus Christ had to do the same thing. Am I going to invest in my mom's relationship here? I'm getting ready to die. You can, can you imagine Christ? He was about 30 years old. His mom thinks he's crazy. Did you know that? When Jesus Christ was talking to the Sadducees and the Pharisees, and he's telling, and he's doing this, and he's doing that. And it, uh, uh, Mary, or Miriam, and his brothers and sisters thought he was crazy. They wanted to talk to him because he's gone crazy. His, 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 his literally says he was besides himself. Do they have good intentions? Yes. Yeah, it's Mary. Were they wrong? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, P, and Jesus Christ, you can imagine him pausing there for a second, and I would think he had the best forethought. He would have sat there and go, look, I got two months until I die. I can invest right here, tell my mom what he, she wants. Now, obviously, that's not thinking the big picture of loving Yahweh, fulfilling the race. I can could, I could invest in this relationship here with my mom, or I could give to her here, or I can invest in the situation and do what's right. And will Yahweh honor that relationship at the resurrection? And I'm just kind of getting ideas about relationships. How much more will Yahweh reward us? When we look, we look what He does. Um, and then look at the relationships in the Scriptures about when people took it on the, on the chin with a grin. Look at Joseph. What did he want? Is my dad okay? Is he still alive? How old was his father when he was sold into slavery? He was old. What did, what, did, what did Joseph do? It, it, even all the situations he remembered Elohim was watching because he, to, he told that to, the, um, I think it was Potiphar's wife. He goes, how can I sin against Yahweh or Elohim? He remembered. And he was investing. And he was investing and investing. And that was on the short end. Now, how much are we going to have when Christ comes back? Do we look at people? Uh, we can look at other people, not to knock them down. You can say when somebody's got 400 likes and 20,000 friends on Facebook, they have their reward. You're telling people what they want to hear. Um, you can see that, not, not to pick on any, any, any ministry, because I, I don't know what somebody's supposed to be doing, but when I see huge, big televangelists that keep it so vanilla, they don't want to say the Democratic Party's evil. They got a lot of people there, though, right? Mm -hmm. And so I don't know about their job is, but I know that that's not an investment in today unless Yahweh told them to keep their mouth shut. He could have specifically told them to be an Obadiah. But it sure looks like they took the path of least resistance. We can look at teachers. And, and, and uh, how many people, how many teachers today who love teaching, right? Like, like uh, Andrew Womack, Kenneth Copeland, will not be teaching in the new earth because they weren't faithful with the word. 
They might have had two or three different things. We don't. I don't necessarily know, but you can see they won't even tell you which translation to read. I'm going to go. They're going to be there. They're going to be rewarded. Andrew Womack's done some gigantic things, but when it comes to teaching the word and loving the word like they said, I don't. Not so much. Uh, e. W. Bolger. I could see him being a teacher there. Joseph Rotherham, I could see him being a teacher there. Some of those people like that. Um, and not to speculate what people will be doing and won't be doing, but a lot of those guys, they're not going to be teachers in the New Earth um, because they're teaching people what they want to hear. We, with teachers, you could teach people what they want to hear, like Aaron did with a golden calf, or you could be like Moses, teach them what they need to hear. Um, and and uh, let's see here. Now we now um, and so so the, those are the, just some of the things that we are in steward of. We're looking at whatever we're doing, whether it, whatever we're good at, um, or what do you want to be doing, um, and then you, you definitely want to make sure it's something you're doing now, building, working, serving. Are there going to be restaurants in the new earth? How would you like your own diner? How would you like your own chain restaurants where you're the owner and you're the waitress? And you know all of them. Okay, well, all right, we start to think about this thing. Okay, I, I, I can imagine that. Um, um, and then we, so what I want to do is, here's a forethought, what are you going to be doing? We were created to work. This life is, how, how well did you work and what were you a good steward with? And Christ was, was a, a, a praising the, the bad steward for his forethought. And then also something else that I never thought about was, um, Jesus Christ, with his work, now, um, let me see here, go to Luke, Luke chapter 8, on page 68. Let me see. Actually, it's 66. Uh, it's going to be the storm rebuked. Then, and if you see right above 822, it says a storm rebuked. Actually, Isaiah, would you read that? 22 through 25? Yeah. <clears throat> a storm rebuked. And it came to pass on one of the days that he entered into a boat and his disciples, and he said to them, Let us pass over to the other side of the lake. And they set sail. Now, as they were sailing, he fell asleep. And there came down a hurricane of wind upon the lake. And they began to be filled, to be filled and to be pearl. And coming near, they roused him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. And he rose up and rebuked the wind and the surging of the water. And they seized, it became a, and it became a calm. calm. And he said to them, Where was your faith? But struck with fear, and they marveled, saying one to another, Who is who then is this that even unto the winds he give or he giveth orders and unto the water, and they hearken hearken unto him. Need, need translations but in the Rotherham, and there's other ones where it says they give him ear. Storms in the water give him ear. Ear. What do you think? Listen. If the storms in the water give Yehoshua ear, they listen. They listen. Oh. They listen to him. Yeah. It's something I never considered until getting ready for this teaching too. Which uh, well, thank you guys for all being here. You, you, you know what? You're going to be rewarded for just this. So so am I. Isn't it going to be great? Um. They kept looking at Yehoshua, saying, "Who is this man? Who is this man?" It says the oceans listen to him. The, the waters, the storms listen to him. The fig tree listened to him. Well, remind me about the fig tree. We'll come back to that. There was different kinds of things. Uh, what, did you, what did Yehoshua do that really set him apart from everybody else? He spoke. He spoke to trees. 
spoke to water. He spoke to storms. He spoke to people. He spoke to children. And he released his faith. And, and evil spirits. Evil spirits. He exercised his faith, his certainty. He exercised what Yahweh had said he had given to him by doing what? Acting like an Elohim. He's the son of an Elohim. Yahweh spoke light be and light. Mm -hmm. Yahweh spoke and then it was, right? Uh, uh, and so here's Yehoshua speaking, right? Do you ever think about that? What are we going to be doing on the new earth? How much speaking are we going to be doing? I never thought about that. How many times have you spoke trees into healing? Have you rebuked storms? Have you used your authority? Have you been a good steward of your authority that is within you? And you have the Ruach Kadesh. You have the written word. Have you been a good steward of what's been given to you? And you're going to go, a lot of times, no, I, I'm not when it compared to the Apostle Paul, but I never thought about speaking to storms and stuff as this being a part of my audition for the new earth. It was Charles Capps, who I listened to when I was like 23 years old, listening to my commute to, to work and, and to college. Here's a, uh, Charles Capps, all the rest of these things. And Charles Capps goes, what do you think Adam and Eve, how do you, how do you think Adam and Eve were moving the elephants? And his, he goes, you would have said, get out of the bushes and get out of the roses. You, el you tigers, you stop tearing up those trees. And he said you, they would have been releasing faith as an Elohim, just like Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ came to this earth, and he walked in obedience with Yahweh, and he walked as the second Adam with the, uh, with the faith of Yahweh, they, they marveled. But I never thought about that being an audition, how you're going to be using your faith there. Uh, are, are there going to be storms? Are there going to be things that need to be changed? And I believe, I believe that I, we are... Uh, let me see here. In Mark 11.22, we, we won't go there. Who, who can quote Mark 11.22? Have faith of Yahweh, verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be lifted up and cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that what he speaketh cometh to pass, it shall be his. Are we commanded to have Yahweh's faith? Mm -hmm. I never thought about that either. It's in the genitive case, uh, so that's, it says, Have Yahweh's faith, or have the faith of Yahweh. It's the genitive case. Are we commanded to have it? Yeah, and how do you have Yahweh's faith? Would would, Yah, would Yahweh uh, speak to a mountain and move, or he also said to the, the the mulberry tree, speak and move it? And we're commanded to have it. Also, in Romans four seventeen, it says Yahweh speaks to things that are not as though they are. Well, what are we supposed to do? Yahweh said, "Light, there's no light. Light be healed. You are healed." And, you, and Mark eleven twenty four says, "When you say it, believe you already received it." And it always works. It always works. It always works. It always works. I was thinking about, uh, well, it, it, uh, I was going to give an analogy, probably not a real good one. But faith, which is certainty, it always works. If it's in line with the Word, it's right here. You might not see the results. I have the faith of Yahweh. I'm walking away from this thing. Jesus Christ had to do that, or Yehoshua Mashiach did that with a, with a, a fig tree, right? Mm -hmm. Did it die immediately? No. 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 Did he sit there and went, oh, oh man, in front of all my friends? Hey, come back 15 minutes. I got to, whoa, got to fire him. No. He walked off. That's the faith of Yahweh. If you said it, you did it, that's certainty, it's a done deal. Did I take Yahweh's word? I put it in my mouth. I speak it like I already, like I already received it. Am I going to give him the glory? Absolutely. Did I check in with him? Yeah. It's a done deal. I'm leaving. So when they came back, I think somebody says a day or two days later, Peter goes, Master, Master, it's dead. It finally worked. Of course it worked. That's what we're supposed to be doing too. What kind of faith are we going to be exercising on a new earth? Go kill that tree. Go move this. Go do that. Go do these other things. Those are going to be the greatest jobs there, guys. There's going to be some really, really good jobs. We're going to have a thousand year... Well, the, the book of Revelation will be taken up into the clouds like Noah's Ark. That's when all the judgment's happening. Judgment is happening down here just like everybody dying during the flow of Noah's Ark. After the tribulation will come down... Jesus Christ, Yehoshua Mashiach, will get a kingdom. He's going to be rewarded for a thousand years. So there's going to be some of the people that survived over the tribulation. They're going to be alive. We're going to come back. Guess what we're going to be doing? 
cleaning. We're going to be judges. Yep. We're going to be teachers. We're going to tell people what to do, what not to do. We're supposed to be judging this, fixing this, doing that. What kind of jobs are we going to have? It's going to be great. And that's just for a thousand years. And I, I, I personally, this is my own speculation, I wonder if that thousand years is another time for us to possibly be investing into what? After a thousand years, what is it? Age abiding without end. I bet you that thousand years is another chance for us to say, really invest, really step this thing up. And Yahweh, He rewards us. He rewards those who diligently seek Him. He's not a socialist in a union. Everybody's the same. Come on, what you got? And the disciples, Peter, James, and John, they're, they're, those three were picked over and over again. I can imagine if I was Judas or Andrew or somebody else, I would have been envious of those, oh, those teacher's pets, teacher's favorites and stuff like that. What I should do is say, I want to be just like them. And that's what Peter, he says, if it's you, let me come out of the, the water. James and John, if he really is the son, let me be at the left hand or my brother be at the right or whatnot. Those are the people that are believing. We're supposed to be competing and competing. Without faith, it is impossibly well-pleasing. And he's a reward to those who what? Diligently seek him. How much time do we have in this life? I don't know. But then it's going to be gone. We'll be happy. We're like, oh, that, man, I didn't invest very much. <laughs> well, it's better to, uh, well, one guy says, it's better to be living in a tent in, uh, on a beach in paradise than in a mansion here, right? Yeah. That's going to be, be newt. Um, so I think about that with our relationship with kids, for instance. Uh, I've, like my son, Caven, he's 13. I'm learning. Man, am I learning. I only, have, I only have one. I can invest in this life here. But if, I am not, if I'm telling him what he wants to hear, I'm not investing in that relationship in the coming earth to come. And the best way that I can, have, I can imagine with that is in the new earth, Caden might be 20,000 miles away. That's where his job is. Does that make sense? But if I invested in this life, we're working in the same business. Right down the street. And I can sit there and go, man, it's not easy telling my son no. It's not easy telling him to re repent. It's not easy telling him that he's going to be judged for this life. No! Man, this stinks! This is my baby. It's all I got. Oh, God, what? Where are you investing, Aaron? That where your heart is is where your treasure is going to be. And then you start thinking, well, golly, at the resurrection, which could be tomorrow, man, I want him to be close. Okay? And then Yahweh will reward us. And so that's not exactly what's going to happen, but it's the best examples I've ever heard. And we say, so, um, let's see. Turn to Isaiah, uh, Psalm 63. 63? Yeah. So what are we supposed to do? What are we not supposed to do? It's neat is it that, that Yehoshua in John 12, 49, he said, he said, I only say what my Father tells me to say, and I only do what my Father tells me to do. And, and, a lot of times I would think of that through communication through the Ruach HaKadosh, right? Through the Spirit. But it would also come back down to this. Because when he hadn't eaten for 40 days, what was he feeling? He was feeling like eating, right? And, and the adversary in Matthew 4, 6 says, If you are the Son of God, he quoted Psalms 91, cast yourself down. And, he was also, and, and Yehoshua came back and said, It is also written. So Yehoshua, when he said, I only say what my Father tells me to say, it's always the written, written word, number one. And he's our example. And then it's through a communication too. And that's one of the reasons why we're supposed to come to prophesy. Be zealous to do it. He wants to speak. He wants to confirm. He wants to talk to us. He wants to still release his faith and encouragement to build us up, to get us, get us jacked up, to get gone. Um, Psalm 63, this page 560. Would somebody read the right above it? A melody of David when he was in the wilderness of Judah. Okay, that's neat. Okay, um, and what? Anytime you see the word has said in the Rotherham, what word is that? Loving kindness. I'm sorry. Wait, anytime you see a loving kindness, it is has said. What is has said? Loving kindness. It's a contract. Um, the, the, I don't think you can give an explanation to that Hebrew word very easily, but it is. Obligatory commitment was the best way. There's a whole book on this word that there is no translation for it. It means he has to do something if you meet these requirements. This is this word, and it's so foreign to the way we're, but Yahweh says, uh, for instance, my house, if I make the payments, or, 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 like a lot of time with me, I'll, I'm like a month ahead of payments. 
No, I'm, I'm getting rid of certain debts. I'll be a month ahead. If, if, if my bank came by and said, hey, we'd like to talk to you about your house. We'd really like somebody else to live in there. You know, I'd say, see you later. I'd lock the door right in my face. No, because uh, they're obligated to let me live here because I make the payments. This is the contract we went into. Does that make sense? If you go to a gas station and you buy your favorite root beer, it's two dollars. You give them two dollars. You walk out. Do you have, uh, do you get to walk out with that? Yeah, they're obligated to give it to you. Yahweh says in His Word, if you do what He says to do, and you are obedient like He says you do to do it, then you can say, "I get this. I demand this in a respectful way. This is coming my way." Is what Hesed is. So if I did this, I did that, I did this, I did this, I did this, and you come back and, and uh, uh, what was his name? George Mueller was great at it because he, he would go present his case before Yahweh in a respectful way. I did this, I've been doing this, Your Honor, respectfully, I did this, I have been doing this with your health, that's one of them. I've been doing this, I'm reading the Word, I'm, I'm walking, I'm praying, I'm confessing every single day. You sit there and as you start confessing uh, what you've been doing, then you're going to go, now, I'm called upon your said. Now you are obligated to meet me in the middle, to meet these things. And you go, boom, I have it. I do have it. And that's how the greatest ones did do it. One of the men of Elohim says, if I am a man of Elohim, let fire come down and consume you when you're 50. Boom, that's Hesed. That's Hesed. And, and, so, and if I've been doing what's right, then I get his said. And in the meantime, I got it. I'll have the faith of Yahweh. If I don't see the immediate results, I'm getting it. And that's having the faith of Yahweh. It, and it, it could be over time. It could be in little increments. But if I'm walking in faith, I have it. Go right, I got it, baby. Then a day later, I go on a walk and go pray and go sit down and go, is there anything I need to know? And when I'm not talking about that subject, talk about other things. Talk about him. Talk about other people's problems. Talk about things he wants to talk about. Other things. Make sure it's not a monologue. And, and then if he brings something up, if he brings something up, listen. And he says, you might want to do this. Or you might have a little sin in your life that you're not getting rid of. Really? Yeah, get rid of this. is holding back your faith and your, your believing. Because sometimes if we have any kind of unbelief or, or sin in our life, then you're going to, man, that, that, that just occupies our faith area. Um, but otherwise, I have it, and you will have it. Um, but I, I try to go into that whole Hasid thing because it's going to explain this. Because in this life, we're going to be like King David's at times. And everything's going to be stacked up against us. And we're not going to have what we want or what we need. And you're going to be in a situation to choose. And we're going to see what King David did. Because King David, right here, says, Where is he? The wilderness of Judah. That does not sound like a resort. David was on the run a lot of his life. Because he did things wrong? No. No. That was just a part of his life. Every time he had to flee from Absalom, he had to flee from Saul, he had to live in a cave. You know, when he lived in his cave, you know who the number one targets would be to get killed? Probably his mom, his seven older brothers, and his sister. Do you think that bothered him? Saul's going to kill you. He probably knows where your parents live, and now you're in a cave. What do you think he felt like doing? You know, man, I, I've never been anything like that. But here's King David. King David, while he's in the in the desert, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna pick on me again, because in my life, that all of us have a seat that's missing. So I don't have my wife yet. So if I'm not careful, I'll be looking at the empty seat that I don't have. Oh, woe is me! I don't have what I want. All of us have. It could be with your children. It could be with a brother, sister. It could be with Melania. It could be with your spouse. I still don't have that thing right now, right? And so it, 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 with me, what I would think is we, I, I think that once I get my wife, everything's going to be perfect. Woo, it's going to be nice, right? <laughs> uh, not necessarily the case because so when you get married, it's going to be a lot of work. It's going to be hard. Actually, when you're single, your life is easier. I'm glad I have that. Verse 1, O Elohim, my El, thou art. He's in the, he's in the desert, guys. In the desert, where what is there a lack of? Water. Water. What do you think most people would be desiring in the desert? Water. Water. Shade. Water. Shade. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. So he starts off, have the faith of Yahweh. You shall have what you saith. I believe, therefore I speak. What do you need? 
remember one time he said, I never, I'm never, I'm not good at anything one time. He said something like that. And I looked at, or you said, I, I, I'm not good at this game. I think you said it once. And I was able to say, is that what you want? You said, no. I said, you'll have you say it. You said, I'm, no, I'm not good at this game. I go, is that what you want? You said, no. I said, you'll have you say it. I don't know if you remember that. And then you're going to go, I need to start changing what I'm saying. Don't say what I have. Say what you want. Does that make sense? We have the same creative force that is in our mouth that was in Jesus Christ's mouth that spoke the storms and all the rest of this stuff. How do you use it? You could give, you could give somebody living in, in, in Mogadishu or even Kenya where guns are, a lot, guns are illegal. So who's the only people with the guns? Ben. The criminals and the cops. You can give somebody, a, hey, here's an here's a M9 9mm, protect yourself. And you come over to the house and you're using it as a hammer. That's, that's not what it's there for. Use your faith. Use your obedience. But here's King David. O Elohim, my El, thou art earnestly do I desire water. No, no. <laughs> earnestly do I desire my wife. <laughs> I desire my children. Ooh. Earnestly do I desire thee. My soul thirsteth for water. Pineapple juice. Nope. Palm grains. No. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh fainteth for a cave, shade, a couch. No. no. My flesh fainteth for thee. What is David doing here? He is confessing. He is using the Ruach Kadesh inside of him and he's speaking what he is spoken. Does he feel like saying these things? No. Are you going to feel like saying some of these things at times? No, that's why you're going to say it. I am healed. I do have it. I do have a lot of friends. I, I am really good at this. I do, I'm really good at that or whatever. You speak it. But King David, what are you saying? Earnestly do I desire thee. My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh fainted for thee. What do you think his flesh and everything's thirsting for? Water, not Yahweh. And, and, and what does he say at the end of this? Where is he? In a land dry and weary for want of water. Where is he? Dying of thirst. And what does he do? He confronts his thirst. He confronts his sunburn or whatever. And he says, I desire thee, my Elohim, my El thou art. I desire thee in a land dry and want for water. What do I want? I want Yahweh. What does he go next? Verse 2. In like manner, as in the sanctuary. What is he thinking about? This life or the next life? In like manner, as in the sanctuary, I had a vision of thee. What is he envisioning? To behold what? Thy power and thy glory. He is forcing his brain and his mouth to submit to his mission in this life. He is investing in this life for the next life. He's forcing his feelings, his brains, his mouth. He might yet be dehydrated. Just to confess they saying, I'm going to say what I need to say. I'm going to say what I need to say. Say, I'm going to say what I need to say. Say it. I'm going to say what I need to say. Remember that. You're in a bad situation. I'm going to say what I need to say. And David does. And then what does he say next? Because better is thy has said than life. My lips aloud shall praise thee. What is better than life? Your has said. Who had done Yahweh's will? David. In everything he did, with the exception of Uriah's wife, he did Yahweh's will. And at this point, he's on the run. He doesn't have his wife or his kids. I don't know. He might be all alone. It, it, doesn't, I don't, it doesn't necessarily say that. But what does he do? He points it right back to Yahweh, and he says what he needs. This, what he needs. I, I'm going to say what I need. And he, and he points it all right back to Yahweh. He says, because better as I have said than life. He was investing in the next life. What do you want for your next life? With your relationships with your spouse? With your kids? Well, if I tell my kids what they want, or if I tell my kids the truth, I've had to do with my son. I couldn't believe how hard it was when he was four years old. I had to confront him on my birthday. Oh, my birthday! Couldn't believe the big sis he had become. And I had to sit down, I had to straighten him out. I said, you are commanded to honor your mother and your father, and in this house, you always will. And here I have this little guy that's four years old in a Scooby-Doo underwear. <laughs> but, I, but he called my bluff. I couldn't believe it. Four! Man, I was waiting until 16, dude. But I did. I straightened him out. And, and, and even if he didn't straighten back out, I'm going to go, I care about this little guy so badly. I can have the relationship in this life and the one to come. And Yahweh will reward us. He will reward us. Um, and so I, I guess 
Practice your faith. How you use your faith and you're speaking the word to, in this life is going to be determined this next life. You're supposed to be speaking faith to people all around you. You're supposed to be speaking healing. You're supposed to be rebuking unbelief. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus Christ. Excuse me, don't come near here with that Christian stuff. I'm sorry, I'm auditioning, man. I don't got time for this. I rebuke that. That's garbage. When's Christ coming back? And you start showing the boss that I'm going to start exercising what I have now because he's coming back. And who knows? Maybe some of the loved ones we have in our life that aren't where they need to be, maybe we can compensate for them by my life and this life. Maybe I can help them out. He sees my heart. He knows what will get me to the, from point A to point B. He knows how to get maximize everything out of me. If I want to compensate for two knuckleheads that aren't doing their job, uh, 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 if I can compensate for them, I'm going to do it. What if you could? Would you do it? And I believe uh, that he's a reward of those who diligently seek him. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for tonight. We thank you for brothers and sisters and showing us how to invest in our relationships to come. And um, for these words. Don't be fearful of the future, but force your mind to submit to my word. And you do so by confessing my word out loud. Do not let your mind take over. For you are in a battle every single day. And when you wake up in the morning, your mind and your thoughts, will, will, they will take over you. But you are to do is just take the word and speak it day and night. And you will force your mind to submit. As you do so, instead of advertisements and commercials all over your head all day long where there's no peace, you'll have my word, you'll have my peace, you'll have my fellowship. And together, we will achieve everything that I plan in the morning and I will reward you greatly. Hallelujah. Happy birthday.